which of the following is not on the external surface of the intact gross brain uh, you see let us look at the brain structure here when we look at the gross brain structure we can see these are the structures that is the mammillary bodies are seen okay the tuber cinerium is seen the crust cerebri is also seen this is crust cerebri this is all which is seen on the gross uh, part here when you look at the brain from the this aspect you can see the cerebellum okay but what you cannot see from outside is this region yes because this is protected inside isn't it it is not seen on the outside so now in our question in our question crust cerebri is seen on the outside mammillary body we have seen it it can be seen from the outside cerebellum is also seen on the outside but the facial colliculus where it is present in the dorsal aspect of the pons which is protected inside isn't it between the pons and the cerebellum so it cannot be seen from outside answer is d then next question is pes and serinus pes and serinus consists of what we have the mnemonic the girl between two surgeons but important point to remember is girl is the gracilis this s is the sartorius this s is the semi tendinosus this is something very important to understand even semi membranosus fits in the mnemonic but that we have to remember it that semi tendinosus is the part semi membranous is not the part is not a part of the pes and serinus okay so answer is b semi membranosus this is what is semi uh, this is what is the pes and serinus we have these muscles gracilis coming from the medial compartment we have the sartorius coming from the uh, anterior compartment semi tendinous is coming from the posterior compartment so these are coming from the different compartments but their insertion is common their insertion is common just like the tent ropes we have one point of attachment common and the other point of attachment of the ropes different isn't it so this is how they uh, this is how they are actually attached and when they come very close to each other when they come very close to each other the chances of their being getting uh, you see uh, uh, like uh, wear and tear is very high because of the friction so to avoid friction between them and between uh, with the bone they have been provided with the bursa which is called as ancillary bursa which is called as ancillary bursa yes next question saddle types and novel joint say it forward question sternoclavicular joint is the answer here okay shortly after week 4 of the development dorsal primary rami begin to innervate which of the following now let us look at the dorsal primary rami see this is our uh, this is our spinal cord and here we can see this is the dorsal root this is the dorsal root here this is the ventral root both of them they unite to make the trunk then we have the dorsal ramus and the ventral ramus so basically dorsal ramus and the ventral ramus both of them are mixed so they contain the uh, sensory fibers for the cutaneous distribution they do have the motor fibers also for the muscles okay both of them the difference is if you consider the spinal cord as an axis all the part which lies anterior to it will be supplied or will be taken care of by the ventral rami like in our axis if you if you look at a dog or some animal so all parts of the body like fore limbs hind limbs and the trunk and in case of human upper limb lower limb and the trunk is supplied the trunk means thorax and the abdomen is supplied by the ventral rami so what will be supplied by the dorsal rami the part which is behind the spine that is the postural muscles the vertebral joints the dorsum the skin of the dorsum right so all those areas will be taken care of by the dorsal rami yes so this is how you can understand this is the region which is supplied by the dorsal rami so among these options ventral no ventral will not be supplied upper limb again as i have explained will be taken care of by the ventral rami again the lateral back region sweat gland will also not be supplied by the dorsal rami the vertebral joints will be supplied by the uh, dorsal rami fine that is our answer so thank you everyone all the very best for structure okay next question is otic ganglion supplies otic ganglion will supply uh parotid gland should be the answer here answer c okay let me do this part and explain see we have um this is the medial wall of the middle ear here we have the tympanic nerve tympanic nerve coming which will make a plexus and from the plexus there is beginning of the lesser petrosal nerve this is lesser petrosal nerve lesser petrosal nerve will pass through the foramen ovale we have one more nerve passing through it it is the mandibular nerve it will pass and holds one ganglia this is otic ganglion and we have our lesser petrosal nerve coming out of it and relaying here and after that 
the post ganglionic fibers will be taken by auricular temporal nerve and where they are going to take it they are going to take it to the parotid gland okay this is how it is happening this is the pathway this is the pathway that you can understand okay so the lesser protrusion nerve comes from the tympanic nerve this plexus is called as tympanic plexus this is tympanic plexus fine so this is the pathway that is required for the parotid gland next